today I am going to take a look at the Z-Cam EVF. I've been looking for an EVF for a few months now because my Ursa Mini Pro sensor died and I ended up buying a red Komodo, which I have not received yet, but I had to sell all my black magic gear. I was in the market for a new viewfinder and it had to have a couple features I was looking for. I am taking a big leap in using this because I have not seen any reviews or feedback on it yet. A lot of people seem to like their cameras and I've heard good things about the build quality and stuff. So this runs for about $999 and I got it from Adorama. Uh, BH Photo was still out of stock for the pre-orders, but this one um, came up the other day and I purchased it and got it within about two days shipping. The reason I chose this one, I was looking for something that was not too expensive. What I wanted out of a viewfinder was to be able to have SDI and HDMI inputs. So if I'm using it on the Komodo, I'll use the SDI. If I want to use it on one of my Blackmagic cameras, then I will use the HDMI. This is brand new. I have not seen a video on this yet, so it'll be interesting. We're going to unbox this and take a look. So let's see what we got. So this is a 1440p wireless HDR, built-in LUTs, built-in exposure tools, adjustable diopter, HDMI and SDI input. Very nice box here. A little protective foam. Get the electronic viewfinder manual. Right. So we can already see that it comes with the viewfinder. We have a Limo to D-tap or P-tap power cable. Nice that they supply that. They can be uh, expensive. We got the wireless video antennas. And we have the viewfinder. Looks like a really good build quality so far. Um, very nice finish. I'm told it's a metal body, same material used to make their cameras. Um, looks like it's got a RE rosette mount uh, for mounting to your EVF contraptions to attach to your camera. Um, I'm told that's an M6 screw, not a quarter inch. So I, I, I believe that's supposed to be M6 threaded. Uh, it's got a quarter inch mount on the top and also a quarter inch mount on the bottom. We have the menu system here. Um, you've got your menu button, okay, up and down, controls, function one and two. So those are probably to turn on programmed presets like your false color and any of your displays inside. And then a nice on and off switch. Um, which is great because you can conserve your uh, battery power when you're not using it and the life of your viewfinder. And on the back, we've got the Limo power and the SDI input, the HDMI full size jack here, and a USB port for loading LUTs and probably updating the viewfinder. In the front, we have a lens cap protected eyepiece, and that looks like the point where you would use the tool to remove the bezel there. Um, but this is really nice because you can protect your viewfinder from dust and fingerprints when you're handling the camera. Um, Feels pretty solid. Doesn't seem like that'll come off. Um, one of the things that I didn't like about the Ursa which I'm checking out here now. The eye cup seems like it's pretty solid on here. Like I'm pulling on it and it's not really coming off. Um, the Ursa viewfinder I had, that thing came off many times. I've lost it on set and then luckily found it again before leaving. Um, so I really like that that's a solidly placed eye cup on there. Gonna power it on. And once you connect the signal, 
light turns green, power on. All right, we are actually looking inside of the viewfinder right now through my Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter lens on my Pocket 4K. So it looks like we have a HDMI signal displayed, 24 frames um, it's detecting, 15.6 volts. We got an RGB parade at the bottom. Uh, if I hit the top function key, turns on the false color. A zebra, mono, blue only, and back to the normal image. If I hit the OK button, it will magnify. And the menu, looks like we have a tools. So you can program what, you, oh, okay, F2 turns a LED on. And set up. So you have to change the source of your HDMI to SDI. And we've got brightness, layout, proximity sensor, Wi-Fi on or off, Wi-Fi channel. But overall, it looks pretty good looking through it. You basically get your overlay displays in addition to the viewfinder screen. So we're going to be selecting the Z cam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and join. We're gonna go to the Zcam app. All right, and then we're gonna hit monitor. All right, so now we are monitoring the wireless app. Pretty straightforward. Wow, that's really not much delay. I mean, I'm I feel like it's almost real time. That's pretty cool. All right, this is the latency test. So far, my first impression is it seems to be a pretty good uh, viewfinder. Honestly, I've only used a few. Um, most recently, the Ursa viewfinder, which I found this to be highly more intuitive for all the menu buttons and the um, ability to use the function keys to turn off things like false color. The menu system is pretty straightforward inside for switching things on. The Wi-Fi took me a second to get figured out, but I did it without any instructions, so I was able to connect to my phone and use the wireless monitoring, which was actually really surprisingly good as far as delay time. And I almost didn't notice any delay. I'd probably have to have someone talking or moving things, but as I was pulling focus and zooming in and out, it almost seemed like real time. So pretty impressed with that. I think it would come in handy for someone to use as a, like a director's monitor on an iPad or something. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy so far with the purchase I made and I look forward to using this on my Komodo when I get it. Definitely recommend that you check this out if you're in the market for an EVF and this is in your budget price point, um, $999. I'd say give it a try and you have 30 days in most places to return if you don't like it. But um, I think I'm going to keep it. Alright, well thanks for checking this out and hopefully I'll see you guys again. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Take care.